is it going, everybody? Here it is, the list that nobody asked for. Not my top five, not my top ten. I couldn't keep it to that few with the amount of amazing games that will be coming out in 2022. Instead, my top 15 top games of this year. I hope you enjoy. Starting off at number 15 is Planet of Lana. I always want to make sure that I feature indie games on any of these lists. It's one of the few areas that I really think push video games forward. You take a beautiful, hand-painted art style combined with music from an award-winning composer, and you have what is ultimately going to be an incredible adventure coming from Thunderful Games. This is one of those titles where, if anybody wants to raise a discussion, well, our video game's art, I want to be able to just point to this one and go, yeah, have you have you played Planet of Lana yet? Yeah, games, games are art. There you go. <laughs> On top of that, you take sort of this cool setting that it's taking place in. I, for some reason, I, listen, I'm a sucker when you take these gigantic robots and you put them and juxtapose them in this otherwise rural setting. It, it's just, it gets me every time. It's cool as all hell, and I can't wait to finally play it. You would think after releasing Prey, a title that was massively well received from both fans and critics, it's currently sitting at an 82 on Metacritic for PC. Seriously, if you've not tried it out, go ahead and check it out. That Arcane Austin would probably want to try to follow in its footsteps with a sequel, but no. Instead, they decide to go in a completely different direction with Redfall, a four-player looter shooter co-op based vampire hunting game. <laughs> what in the world? It has the potential to be great if they continue with a good story, the awesome level design, and incorporate some choice and consequence into the looter shooter genre. I think you have something really cool on your hands here and I can't wait to check it out when it releases later this year. Yeah, I think there's vampire in this. Really? What does it taste like? Be specific. <laughs> He's ran out the door! Somebody stop him! <laughs> did that get him? <laughs> oh, uh, no! Uh, it, it very much did not get him! Uh, Waller! Waller! Blow up his head! When I first saw the trailers for Kill the Justice League, I didn't know what to think, but as more footage came out, it came very apparent very quickly that Rocksteady nailed the tone of this game. I was genuinely laughing during the most recent trailer that we saw. As to whether or not we'll actually be killing the Justice League, that's yet to be seen. Uh, I have a feeling that we'll most likely just be sort of saving them from Brainiac's influence. However, when we first got our glimpse at gameplay, the verticality looked incredible, the level design looked fun and interesting, and of course, they nailed the characters. And more importantly, if they could get the story right, keep in mind this is coming from Rocksteady Games, the guys who made the Arkham Trilogy, one of my favorite trilogies of all time. If they could nail the story down and they get the gameplay and on top of that it's backed by a phenomenal vocal cast, I think this game can easily be one of my top of 2022. decry the truth when forced to face it. Few AAA games are really willing to try to push the boundaries and innovate in new and exciting directions, but when Ghostwire Tokyo first revealed its trailer, I knew that they would be trying something different, and they didn't disappoint. The more that we see of Ghostwire Tokyo, the more interested I am as you're combining this karate magic system in order to fight enemies from traditional Japanese folklore throughout Tokyo, an open world 
Tokyo that you can go off and explore. Sure, it's a departure from what we're used to with the horror survival genre. They could have easily just went with another Evil Within game, and that would have been well and fine and great, but I think Ghostwire Tokyo is able to really flex some of those writing muscles, especially when you consider this is technically supposed to be an action, adventure, mystery, horror game, combining a lot of genres there. In any case, I find Tango to always be one of the more underappreciated studios, so I'm really hoping that this one can bring them up to the limelight and really get them the recognition that they deserve. A new age will dawn! Transport ship Caron. You are cleared for landing. Keeping in line with the horror genre, we have the Callisto Protocol, coming from the makers of Dead Space. That alone makes you really cross your fingers that you're going to get a fantastic experience. It seems like one of those passion projects that the studio's been waiting to make for a very long time, and now they finally either have the resources or the technology in order to do it. Set in the year 2320 on Jupiter's moon, the Callisto Protocol is oozing atmosphere from what we've seen in the cinematic trailer so far, whether or not that will transfer really well into the game itself is of course yet to be seen but I have no doubt a team of incredibly talented developers has everything that they need in order to pull it off. In a year that's pretty scarce with horror releases I think this could easily be one of the standouts the one that really calls to you and if there is an appropriate category during the game awards this year there's no doubt that Callisto Protocol will at least be nominated. Like Avatar, is it okay to like Avatar? I feel like it's one of those taboo subjects where you kind of have to whisper and go, "Hey, hey, oh, you you like Avatar? All right, come come on, we'll talk about it in this alleyway. Just don't don't let anyone know you're, where you're going. Don't be followed." You can't deny that Avatar, the film at least, pushed the boundaries for what Hollywood was doing, and I don't think the game will have that claim to fame. I think that's a bit of a stretch, but I. For what it's worth, even if you didn't like the plot of the movie, I thought the world is incredibly interesting, and if you let me create my own character and explore an open world and there's choice and consequence involved, then there's something really special here, and as long as it's not marred by some greedy practices like microtransactions or NFTs being thrown in the game, then I'm really looking forward to whatever comes. Also, please, I, I don't think this will be the case, but for the love of God, please, don't make it some kind of movie tie-in cash grab BS like that would just don't don't please no. One of the coolest things to come out of 2022 is the new IPs that we're getting. There, remember a couple years back where everything that we were getting seemed like it was either a remaster or a remake or just a sequel to an existing franchise? 
not the case in 2022. Of course, there's still plenty of those. Hellblade 2, uh, Horizon 2, God of War 2, and many others. But yet, I still feel like there's enough fresh brand new IPs that really keep it, things exciting for 2022. And Nightingale is no exception to that rule. Another co-op game from someone who primarily likes single-player experiences, it had to make my list as it combines magic with Victorian era. I think they're calling it Gaslamp Fantasy. And using that magic as an area for survival craft, I think opens up a whole new realm of possibilities. One of the big things about this game is you're not sticking to just one realm or one environment. You're actually getting to go into magic portals that take you to all different types of environments and landscapes, allowing for really cool Cool settings. This is coming from a Bioware, Aaron Flynn. It's his first debut game from the studio. So here's hoping that he can attract the student, the talent that he needs to execute on what is otherwise an incredibly ambitious vision. Nightingale, our beacon of hope. But beyond our reach. Stalker 2 is another title that you knew it was going to be making this list. It's close enough to two of my favorite franchises, Metro and Fallout, combining what looks to be the best of both of those elements. Now, it had a bit of a rocky start when the developers announced they were going to try to do NFTs, a decision that completely blew my mind after Ubisoft was completely downvoted and quickly became one of the more hated companies for trying to implement shady monetization practices. Thankfully, Stalker 2 at least decided, no, we're gonna pull it immediately after. You have a non-linear story that's coming from Unreal Engine 5, a beautiful, beautiful engine with tons of potential waiting to be exploited. I hope that the choice and consequence in the game really plays out in some meaningful and exciting ways, allowing for multiple playthroughs, and if I can go and talk to you about it and we have completely different experiences, that kind of thing. That, to me, is where Stalker 2 has the most opportunity to flourish and where I think it could really do its best, but we'll have to wait and see when the game comes out. Stalker. At number seven, Horizon Forbidden. West, a game that's so vibrant and so filled with color and looks to take everything that the first game did well and improve upon it exponentially. Horizon Forbidden West has a lot of promise. Now, when I first played Horizon Zero Dawn, it was the type of game that I, I really thought played too safe, but now you're taking this combination of above ground and underwater environments with the lushful color taking place in, in San Francisco which is a pretty cool setting. The monsters look much better. The melee combat looks much more innovative and pushes the genre forward. On top of that, you have a massive amount of increased verticality and movement involved in the game. So when you develop a sequel, Horizon Forbidden West seems to be exactly how you should do it the proper way. I can't wait to get my hands finally on Forbidden West. That's if I could get my hands on a PlayStation 5 at all. Always said a storm was coming. Yeah, and it's almost here. No one talks about them. Not a whispered word is said. The Court of Owls is a myth. <laughs> 
They're listening. Yet another Warner Brothers title making it onto this list, Batman Gotham Knights. As you can tell, I'm a massive Batman fan, which admittedly might be the driving reason why it made it onto this list, as I have a lot of concerns surrounding this game that I'll talk briefly about. But Batman Gotham Knights is made by a separate developer from the Rocksteady team, and it's set in its own continuity apart from the Arkhamverse, so you don't have to worry about stepping on toes with the lore and the timing and all these things. Immediately right from the get-go, Batman is supposedly dead, is he really? The same way that Joker wasn't the main villain in Batman Arkham Origins. Yeah, no, hey, listen, he's... He's dead. <laughs> We're on the same page here, you and I. But admittedly, there's a couple concerns I have about this game. The enemies, since they all have health bars and you could actually visually see the damage numbers popping out of them when you punch them, which is a bit weird in a Batman game. This is one of those titles where I feel there's a lot that can go wrong more than can go right, if that makes any sense. I'm still excited for it. I'm still hoping for the best for whatever we get from Gotham Knights but it's one that I'm certainly wary of. As long as the combat's there and the story's there, and of course it is going to be relying on some pretty good writing as well, I think you'll have a solid Batman experience. If you really want to go down this rabbit hole, you need to know there's no coming back from it. We finally made it in the top five and kicking off this list is going to be Somerville and I'll give you three guesses as to why. Cool art style, check. Massive, gigantic creatures in a backdrop of a rural setting, check. Indie game that's handcrafted and narratively driven, check. This is the reason why, do you understand why I love and hold indie games so dearly? I think truly they're all, sometimes the pinnacle of gaming experiences. The small team with the small budget and what they're doing here, it's monumentally impressive. This is something I can't wait to sink however long it is. It could be a couple hours, it could be 20 hours. Doesn't matter to me, as this is an experience that I can't wait to have for myself. And I hope one that you guys will seriously consider checking out. the dark side, young Skywalker has become. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. I'm from the Resistance. Your sister Leia sent me. We need your help. Any LEGO fans out there, LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, one of the most important games in my childhood and I know many others. We just, I played the living daylights out of this and now you're taking not one, not two, not three, but all nine episodes in Star Wars, even adding in DLC, I believe from the likes of The Mandalorian and, and Rogue One and other areas of those kind of side projects of Star Wars. Listen. This game has already been delayed for over a year. And now at this point, if we need to wait a little bit longer, I'll wait a little bit longer. Admittedly, I have never enjoyed a LEGO game as much as I've enjoyed LEGO Star Wars, and I can't express how much this game honestly means to me. So I look at the trailers for this game, and it's one of those things that just fills me with an unbelievable amount of childhood nostalgia. I the first time I saw the LEGO Star Wars trailer, I teared up a bit. It was just excitement. It brings me back to my childhood. You could tell from the developers that are working on this game based on the amount of stuff they're doing to make it better to the point where the developers even went back. Yes, they're voicing the entire nine movies, which is incredible on its own, but they're also adding in an optional murmur mode to capture the nostalgia of the original games, which is above and beyond anything that they honestly had to do. Please, this this is one title to not rush 
before it's ready. I am a Jedi, like my father before me. So be it, Jedi. I recognize that dour expression anywhere. Odin's got tricks up his sleeve we haven't dared to consider. Again, yet another title that I probably won't be able to play because I don't have a PlayStation 5. And yet here it is. God of War Ragnarok, God of War. It wasn't a revolutionary game, I don't think. It didn't, it didn't break any barriers, aside from the fact that it had the way the camera was done, where everything in the game is one continuous shot, which was very impressive, don't get me wrong. A lot of it didn't do anything truly revolutionary, but what gripped me through the entire experience was the story. This heartwarming tale between Atreus and Kratos and just the characters they meet along the way like Mimir and Freya and it's just an absolutely delightful experience. It's another one of those things where the story is the most important aspect of the game and they nailed that a hundred percent. You augment that and improve it by having solid gameplay in the background and you, you have a perfect AAA experience. It's everything that you can hope for in a good AAA game. If you were to tell me that this was going to be pretty much the exact same game with the new story, I honestly, I would be okay with that just because the writing is one of the best parts about the original God of War game. But no, there's, they're, obviously they're naturally taking it a step further with improved gameplay and combat and abilities and tons of other aspects. They're really digging into the feedback of what worked and what didn't in the first one to make a better experience this time around. Hence why God of War Ragnarok is making one of the top spots on my list for 2022 games. Are you coming with us? Time to add your own story to these hallowed walls and quite possibly shape the future of the wizarding world. This one is weird. This one I did not expect to make it onto my top list of games coming out in 2022 and yet here we are. You take RPG open world. You combine it with something that most of us have dreamed of for a very long time. I grew up on the Harry Potter books. I grew up on the Harry Potter films and it was a big part. It's one of the first books I ever read. So now to be able to actually sit down, craft my own character, join my own house, attend my own classes, make my own friends, have my own story, explore the open world of Harry Potter, of Hogwarts, of Hogsmeade and all other locations that the game will take you to. The, uh, this is a dream come true. It's like it, hearing this game get announced was genuinely like getting your very own Hogwarts letter in the mail. And I know not everybody's a Potterhead. Some people hate Harry Potter and that's totally fine. This game's not for you. But many others who are kind of on the cusp, they're gamers and they know of Harry Potter and their friends have been telling them to try to get into it. This is a great way to do that. And Ideally, in a perfect scenario, we get to do absolutely everything we'd want. And actually, when I think about what Hogwarts Legacy can be, it seems to me like this is a title that would make a great franchise. Where they release their first game and it's good, it has its problems, but it has a lot of strengths. And then in subsequent sequels, they can further improve on that formula. It's also one of those titles, I don't think the gameplay is necessarily the most important thing to get right here. Which sounds weird to say in a video game. But if you have a solid story, I think that Hogwarts Legacy can really set itself as a defining game of the generation. Now, whether or not it pulls that off, well, we'll have to wait and see. The choices you make now will define the legacy of Hogwarts. Hey there. 
there, loser. You really thought that Blood Bowl was just about spilling blood and wrenching balls? You're in the big leagues now. That's why you need a sponsor. Approved by the best Nurgle team. Nurgle King. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> did you see that, Bob? I sure did, Jim. What a sneaky git. Blood Bowl 3. Brutal, crazy, tactical. This is the Blood Bowl. The iconic death sport returns in an all-new action-packed latest break-all-the-rules football-heavy board game sports title that's going to shake the sports game industry as we... Okay. No. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. You knew it was coming. You, you knew, you got, you knew it was coming. It's no, nobody's surprised here. This isn't some kind of epic turnaround mysterious plot twist of events bethesda's first brand new triple a rpg in 25 years that todd howard has been thinking about for generations that they didn't have the technology to make come on they brought out a brand new engine for this game the creation engine 2 they're utilizing photogrammetry they're improving their procedural generation they're doing better ai and better pathfinding and better questing and better story and it's in its own universe that they're not constricted to the current lore and they get to reinvigorate their passion because they're not constantly cycling between elder scrolls and fallout and elder scrolls and fallout where they actually get to make something new for the first time again in 25 years that's huge starfield has the potential to be just as if not more genre defining than skyrim was it's still considered to be one of the best rpgs of all time depending on the list that you go to and on top of that i know i get it people are frustrated with bethesda because of fallout 76 but you look at the history of their games and they have won back to back to back to back awards on so many of their launches and now you're going to try to tell me that starfield is going to be anything short of incredible when you look at Starfield, and when we hear about Starfield, it's one of those things that it... They're taking all of the best elements of Bethesda Game Studios, and they're putting it into this game. At least that's what we've been told, and for what it's worth, I'm willing to take their word on it. I know that just like any other studio, Bethesda embellishes, and they hype up their games. That's just par for the course. And yet, something is different about this game game something's really really special here and the team knows it and we know it and when we finally do get to play it later this year and we see that full extended gameplay demo at e3 i think everything and more that we're hoping for from a single player rpg experience we're going to get with starfield and that's why it has to take number one on my top list of 2022 so there you have it i'm sorry this took a little bit longer than i would have hoped but my top 15 games i would have tried to keep the list shorter it was just impossible and this is just scratching the surface i still didn't even mention games like elden ring which yeah it didn't make the list but i'm still incredibly excited for it or other titles like hellblade 2 or even hell uh plague tale requiem right so many amazing launches coming in 2022 you just you can't it's hard it's almost impossible and realistically next week i guarantee you some of these are going to get shifted around to different positions in my mind if i look at this list in a couple days it'll be different so i hope you guys enjoyed let me know if you agree with my list or what you were surprised didn't make the list if anything and uh you know please do Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and want to see more of these kind of top 10 videos. I'm more than happy to do them. It was fun to put this one together. And so I'm looking forward to making more, of course, if you guys want to see them. But thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please do leave a like on the video. And as always, I hope to see you all next time. So long, everybody. To discover what's out there. Good luck, Constellation. You are go for launch.